The Foreigner is directed by Martin Campbell, the man behind The Mask of Zorro, GoldenEye, Casino Royale, Edge of Darkness, Green Lantern, and some other films as well that are pretty enjoyable. Vertical Limit, eh, it's okay. Vertical Limit's okay. Sort of. And it stars Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan. Jackie Chan plays a man who loses his daughter in a terrorist bombing. In his grief, he goes to Pierce Brosnan's character, who was once a member of the IRA, who is now in a position of power, trying to get the names of the bombers so that he can hunt them down, because Jackie Chan's character has the skill set to do so. Now, this film could go one of two different ways. You could have it be more realistic, or you could have it be like Taken 2. In Taken 2, Liam Neeson instructs his daughter to throw grenades off of a rooftop without even looking to see where she's throwing them so that he can listen for the sounds of the explosions to judge how far away she is. And there's no consequences for this. Campbell chooses the much more serious route. We have a film that explores the political repercussions of a terrorist bombing as well as the personal ramifications of what would happen to a father who loses his daughter. The film only hits a few of the beats you would expect it to in this moment. We don't get to necessarily grieve with him in finding this body. We see it through the lens of a reporter who's there, who snaps the photographs. And it's Campbell's continuous, unique viewpoint of story beats that we think we've seen before and we think we're familiar with that keep this movie moving in a fresh way that made it very interesting for me. Now, I feel I should warn you guys, this is not a Jackie Chan beat em up movie. There are action scenes, and they're a lot of fun, and as usual, Chan is fantastic in them. He actually gives a very good dramatic performance here as well. He's done really good work in movies, and as an actor, I find him very underrated because he is often mostly judged for his fighting ability, which is unparalleled, and his stunt work. But as an actor, especially when he's given the opportunity to act in his native tongue, he's really good. But again, this is not a Jackie Chan action movie only, as the trailers will have you believe. This is actually a political thriller drama. Pierce Brosnan has a lot of really great scenes. This is one of the best performances from Brosnan I've ever seen. He is excellent here. And he gets a lot of really meaty dialogue and a lot of really intense moments to chew the scenery with. I love Jackie Chan, I really do, but Brosnan almost stole the whole film. This is a film that will at times disappoint people because you're going to go into this movie expecting to see Jackie Chan punch a lot of things. If you want to see Jackie Chan at age 30, that time has passed. And so his work is not going to be the same as it was. This is an older, grizzled man who's dealing with a lot of pain. And what I also liked about the way the film portrayed his character was that you don't really learn that much about him at first. In fact, you really don't know anything about him, and he seems oddly unhinged. And some of the things he does in retaliation, you're like, whoa, I mean, you, you might almost be becoming your own enemy right now with what you're doing. But as the film progresses and you learn about his backstory, things start to become clear. So the film has a way of peeling back layers, and I found it rather fascinating. The major issue that a lot of people are going to have with this movie is that it's a lot more wordy than I think people are going to expect. Far more political as well. This is, at its core, a thriller. And it also has Jackie Chan in it. And so people are going to go to this film expecting a specific thing. What Martin Campbell does so well, though, is revitalize things that need it. He did it with Pierce Brosnan, originally in GoldenEye, again with Daniel Craig in Casino Royale. He did it as well with Zorro. Who was talking about Zorro in the 90s until The Mask of Zorro? And once again, Mel Gibson, Edge of Darkness. And here he's giving Jackie Chan an opportunity to give a more dramatic performance while also still giving the audience a few really kick-ass scenes that'll make people clap and get excited. But the film can get a little wordy, and that's the biggest issue I had with it, is the mix between is this a revenge action movie or is this a political thriller? Sometimes the two don't mesh and don't really feel like we're watching the same film when we cut back to Jackie Chan in the woods, living in a tree fort like Rambo, and then we're back to Pierce Brosnan and political arguing. The film is never boring, at least for myself. There will be people who are bored by this movie, but I found it consistently interesting enough, and it reminded me of one of those good old-fashioned thrillers that we don't see that much anymore. I'm going to give The Foreigner a B+. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to tomorrow. I'm going to be reviewing one of the Friday the 13th movies, 
my favorite of all of them. It's definitely a hilariosity, a major guilty pleasure. I hope you guys look forward to that. And as always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.